Hi everyone, my name is Frank Westfall, and in this video I'm going to show you how to get your files off of a computer that no longer starts up due to a corrupt operating system or an operating system that isn't working properly enough for you to be able to access your files. As long as your system disk is still functional, your files are not gone, and you can actually get them back pretty easily. I'm going to do this by creating an Ubuntu Live bootable USB disk and then use this to access the system drive on this laptop, copy the files off of that system drive onto another USB disk where I then have access to them once again on any computer. And I'm going to do all of that without ever booting up Windows on this computer. So maybe you have a computer that is running really slow or it's having pop-ups all over the place or you're getting the Windows recovery screen upon startup, or maybe even the Windows blue screen of death, just because the operating system is no longer working correctly does not mean that your computer is unusable or that the files you have on it are gone. Quite the opposite is actually true. Not only can you easily get your files back, but you can also install a perfectly clean operating system back onto the computer for free if you want to, and the computer will run like brand new again. There are two pretty easy ways to get your files off of a computer with a corrupt operating system. In this video, method one, I'm going to use the Ubuntu Live USB disk method, and in another video coming soon, I will use a physical SATA to USB adapter to do the same thing. So you have options when it comes to getting your files back. Very quickly, I want to say thank you to all of you who have subscribed recently to my channel. When I make these videos, they are for you, and when you subscribe, you're supporting my work, and I appreciate that. So thank you very much. There are links to my videos of how to do a clean install of Windows 10 or Windows 11 in the description below. If you want to take that extra step after you get your files back to actually fix your computer and have it run like brand new again, I highly recommend doing so because once you learn how to install operating systems, you don't have to buy new computers when the operating system becomes corrupt. But for now, if you just want to get your files back, this is how you do it. Let's get to it. This is what you will need for this process. Access to any other computer that is still running properly, and you need that access in order to create this bootable Ubuntu Live USB disk. And then two thumb drives with at least 8 gigabytes or more of storage on them. One thumb drive is to run Ubuntu on. And the other one is to have a place to copy the files back once you have access to them. And if you have a large amount of files that you want to recover off of the corrupt computer, you may need a very large drive for that. Say you have 200 or 300 or 400, 500 gigabytes, maybe even a terabyte of data, then obviously you're not going to be able to put that on an 8 gigabyte USB disk. Make sure that the external drive that you're copying the files to is large enough to be able to handle the data that you need to store there. If you have a large amount of data, the 2 terabyte and 4 terabyte Seagate and Western Digital external USB drives are what I recommend. I've used those extensively. They're really handy to have around for a bunch of different reasons, and those are quality brands. And of course, you will need the computer that has crashed or has a corrupt operating system. Okay, step one is to create the Ubuntu bootable USB disk. And the first thing we want to do is insert the disk that we're going to use. We've inserted that. I named this one Ubuntu just for the purpose of clarity while making this video, but yours might be named something different. Now we wanna open a browser and download a copy of Ubuntu. I'm gonna use Google Chrome and type in download Ubuntu. That's U-B-U-N-T-U. -U -U. And go to get Ubuntu download and make sure you're going to ubuntu.com. You always want to check the domain of the website you're going to. We want to go directly to the creators or the manufacturers or the owners of the software. And we're going to do download Ubuntu desktop. This is the latest version. That's the one we're going to grab and the download has started. That can take a while to download because it's 4.6 gigabytes. I actually downloaded it before I started this video, so I'm just going to skip ahead, but you might have to wait five to 10 minutes for that download to complete. I'm going to go show in folder. So this is what's called an operating system ISO file. You can see it's a large file, 4.58 gigabytes. And if we were to look at the properties of this, we can see the type of file is an ISO file. Now we want to go download a copy of what is called Rufus. And that allows us to take that ISO file and extract data out of it and write it onto the USB disk to make that USB disk bootable. So it's called Rufus 
R U F U S and I'll just put download after it and then this is the official Rufus website. We're going to do Rufus Portable, Rufus 4.0p.exe for Windows X64 systems. So that's an ad. We just click the X to X out of that ad. And now we have the Rufus download. Double click this and say yes if you get prompted for Windows user account control. And when we open Rufus, we will see this window. And this is the device that we're going to write to. And then we need to choose the source image, and that is the Ubuntu ISO file that we downloaded. So we go to select, choose this Ubuntu ISO file. And we actually don't have to change anything here. You can rename it if you want. I'm just going to name this bootable Ubuntu USB, just for clarity's sake. But once you have selected the destination and the source, all the defaults are fine and just hit start and then go right in ISO image mode yes it's warning us that we're gonna format this disk and everything on it is gonna be overwritten that's okay that's what we're using this USB disk for and now you'll see the progress this can take a while up to like 10 or 15 minutes okay the creation of the USB disk has completed we can close this and just eject the disk And we're ready to use it. Okay, now that we've created our bootable USB disk, we're just going to plug it into this computer and hit the power button. And then when we hit the power button on a Dell system, we're going to hit F12 for the one time boot menu. But on your manufacturer of computer, it might be different. Just Google search the manufacturer of your computer and then one time boot menu hotkey. So for example, Acer one time boot menu hotkey or HP one time boot menu hotkey. In this case, on a Dell, the one-time boot menu is F12. So I'm going to hit the power button and then hit F12 repeatedly right away. And we got the preparing a one-time boot menu. And then we're just going to scroll down to the USB disk and hit enter. And on this, you can either do Ubuntu safe graphics or just let it sit and it will time out and it will start booting Ubuntu. I'm going to scroll down to Ubuntu safe graphics and hit enter. And here we want to go try Ubuntu. Now we're at the Ubuntu desktop and here is where we should also plug in our other USB disk. And this is the disk that we're going to copy the files we want to recover onto. And you can see it acknowledged that I plugged in a different USB disk. That's just the name of my USB disk. Your USB disk could be named anything. The name is irrelevant. Now we want to find the files that we were accessing on our Windows version that became corrupt. And we want to copy them to this new disk. So I'm going to open this disk. I have some data on there right now that I'm just going to go ahead and delete. So our destination disk is now empty. And I'm going to right click on files and go new window. Files is this one, the fourth one down from top left, and go New Window. And when I'm doing file copies, I always like to go from left to right. However you keep it organized, but we just want to know that this is our source over here, and this is our destination. And now, to get to the files in our Windows user profile, we can see the actual physical disk. And we're looking at it now from a different angle. We're seeing the same disk, but we're looking at it from a different angle. And we can click into it. This is all what you would see on your C drive if you were running Windows right now. It's the exact same files, exact same data. Most people have their data under their Windows user profile, which is here, users. I'm going to go into my Windows user profile and grab some data that I want to copy off. Keep in mind that you might have data just at the root of your C drive. So if we take a step back again, this is what would have been considered the C drive in Windows, and it's considered the root in Linux. We click into it. I actually have some Hyper-V virtual machines at the root of my C drive, and maybe I want those. In this case, I don't. They were just for the purpose of making a video, so I'm not going to copy them off. But maybe you have data that you want off of your C drive. Just be aware that the data you want can be anywhere, but you can browse it now, and you can just grab it from wherever it is. So let's just pretend it's in users, your username, and then documents or desktop 
we'll click into that. My username, but in this case it would be your username. And then this is the downloads folder. This is what you would have seen on your Windows computer in your downloads. Say I want all those files. I can copy those and paste them in the destination folder. Maybe I wanted to get some files from my desktop. So I could go over here, add that to the destination folder. And let's say I had something in documents as well. I don't actually have any data in here, but I have a couple folders. So I'm going to grab those, select them all. Control A will allow you to select all files, by the way. Copy. And then paste. And actually, Control C would allow you to copy. And Control P will allow you to paste if you're interested in hotkeys. Um, this one is just telling me I have a duplicate file. And actually, this desktop I and I is irrelevant. So I'm just going to do skip. Obviously, you would want to be grabbing only the data that you want off of your other computer. And if you really wanted to be careful, you could just copy the entire C drive. Now, that's a lot of data and it would take a long time. And you also need to make sure that your destination USB drive is large enough to handle it. But you could do that. And then you would literally just have a copy of all the data on the C drive of the computer that had a corrupt operating system. So we have what we want here. And I'm going to go ahead and eject this disk, close it out and go to files again. And here's that USB disk. If I right click it, I can eject it and I can now pull it out of the computer. And this is also an opportunity for you to play around with Ubuntu if you want. This is a, an operating system that's running here and it's completely different than Windows. There are a lot of similarities, but this is a Linux operating system and you can experiment with it. I'm gonna go ahead and shut down. To do that, you can click on the bottom left corner in this square area, go to terminal, and then just type the word shut down, all lowercase, one word, and hit enter. After one minute, it will shut down automatically. There goes the shutdown command. We have the disk with our files. We're good to go. Okay, so now that we have pulled the files off of the crash computer's system disk and put them on a USB disk, I'm gonna plug that disk into the same computer that I created, the Ubuntu bootable USB disk, and see if we have access to our files. And there are our files. We pulled the data off of a system disk from a computer that would no longer boot. And we did it without ever using the original operating system on that computer. Ubuntu is a version of Linux operating systems. And when you create a bootable USB disk with Ubuntu on it, you have the option to try Ubuntu, which means it's just reading it off the USB disk instead of installing the operating system onto your system drive. An Ubuntu live USB disk is like a portable operating system that exists only on this USB drive and can be plugged into any PC computer. When you run Ubuntu on an external disk like this, you can then look at your system drive on the computer that may be corrupt without running the operating system on the system drive. You get a different way to view the same data. And in this case, because we're doing file recovery, once we have the data copied off onto our other drive, we can then overwrite that corrupt system disk with a new operating system. As I briefly mentioned earlier, I highly recommend learning how to install operating systems because it can save you a lot of money through the course of your life on buying new computers. This particular computer I've had for nine years and I've had four operating systems on it. I started with Windows 7 on a mechanical hard drive. Then I went to Windows 10 on a solid state. Then I went to another install of Windows 10 on a solid state because I damaged one of my Windows 10 operating systems on this. And I am now running Windows 11 on a solid state drive. The only reason you wouldn't be able to install a new operating system on an existing computer is if the computer hardware is not capable of running it or it's gonna run it really poorly. Like say for example, if this thing only had four gigs of RAM or two gigs of RAM, and like maybe an i3 processor, I wouldn't attempt to run Windows 11 on it. But if you have good specs on the computer, then you can run modern operating systems on them for a long time, even though the hardware is old. This particular one has a quad core i7 and eight gigs of RAM in it right now and a solid state drive. It runs Windows 11 perfect. So very often you can use your existing hardware to run the most current software. And that saves you a bunch of money because you don't have to go buy a new physical computer. And one last thing, Many other users have found my Google Drive video very helpful. Using Google Drive will allow you to avoid losing access to your files to begin with. And it is by far 
the easiest way to not only synchronize your data across multiple devices where you see the same data on all devices, but also to have a backup of your files. So if something like this happens where you can't boot your computer, you don't even have to do this method because you can just go to Google Drive online and pull your files off. I have a link to that video in the description below. And if you're not using Google Drive to synchronize data and to have a small scale backup solution, I highly recommend setting it up. It's probably the single application that I use the most in all my computers and have been doing so for about 10 years now. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this information helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more computer systems tutorial videos, as well as other interesting how-to videos, sometimes original music videos, I'm working on those, and personal health and philosophy videos. Also, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. So far, I have been able to keep up and answered every single question that has been posted. Thank you. Bye for now.